again, you know, going back to square one, we can't really talk about implementing the gold and silver standard or talk about the Islamic economic system if we need a uh, polity, you know, which is implementing uh, Islam, you know, or Sharia, you know, uh, in its full steam. Right. right, we can do piecemeal. Yeah, but I don't understand one thing. Even let's say if there is a polity as such mm. that you guys are t talking about, how would that polity work by itself? Shouldn't it be trading with other countries? They have their own system. So how will that work? How will that interaction take place? Well, I mean, a lot of it would depend on on how that pol like how this entity would come into existence in today, and then it, I think that. Well, what when these policies, when you kind of look at their magnitude and their impact on that, it would be that first that that first kind of starting point, as as guided by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he was picking where to uh, migrate to, one of the one of the conditions was that that political entity have to be self sufficient, right? So it have to at least be able to provide from a you know kind of resource perspective for its population, from at least from a food perspective. So, for example, like what would be a no go. No offense to our brothers and sisters in Lebanon, but Lebanon is uh, not a pl point where you could launch from, right? When, but on the other hand, we have the countries like Turkey and Pakistan who have, you know, a substantial resource se a sector that could be reorganized in a very quick manner to to fulfill the needs of the people from a from a from from a basic needs perspective. Those would be the kind of starting points because we could be expect to have you know boycotts and other kind of uh, you know kind of retaliatory measures imposed on such a political entity so in its in its in its in its birth uh, sort of in, in the birth kind of phase when it's trying to get struggle to 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 get get on its own feet the first place is that first thing is to you know that taking a couple some areas in a, in a, in a, in a place like uh, Syria or Lebanon would not be a, uh, would be a no-go because it can't even defend itself Whereas, you know, a place like Pakistan, for example, would be an, like an, an example of a place that could launch and defend defend itself. And so that would be the first point. And then quickly that that state would have to, you know, kind of bring other the other Muslim territories under one flag, so to say, under the flag of uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to, and to kind of keep on uh, reuniting the ummah politically under this, this, this entity. So in other words, uh, it's probably, you know, I think what you're trying to allude to is that in the infancy stage of this polity, when it comes to very existence, it needs to be, it has to have a capability of uh, self-sustainability. Essentially, it has to be self-sufficient for the time being uh, and in its infancy stages. And then obviously, you know, then you outgrow it, then you expand it, you know, and bring other uh Muslim, you know, lands within its, uh, within, within its, uh, under its flag, essentially, right? And, and then obviously, you know, you have to have, when you talk about self-sufficiency and self-sustainability, you have to have enough resources within that, uh, within that polity, you know, where you can actually have, uh, trade plus at the same time, you know, food, uh, resources, water, food, etc. that, you know, can, you don't have to depend on the imports primarily. So you have to have enough stocks or, you know, you have to have enough you know, fertile lands within that polity, uh, within the territorial boundary, uh, where you can actually grow your own food for your population. So I think that's probably where you're leaning to, like, you know, in the infancy stage, that needs to happen for maybe X number of months or years right. you know, before you actually start trading uh, with, right. with other with other nations. And then, I mean, again, it's, it's, it's uh, I think it's some sort of a, I think it's hard. I, I think I hear where you're coming from, too. It's sometimes hard to kind of put into perspective when we look at the world today from a nation state perspective and how the world existed uh, prior to the uh, pr uh, nation state model we are, we are we're finding ourselves in. You know, for example, when you talk about the Prophet Muhammad uh, you know, uh, when he migrated from Makkah to Medina, right, it was a very much of a tribal system. So, you know, there were imports, but at the same time, if you look at it, even the Romans and the Persian at that point in time were dealing in gold and silver standard, right? You know, gold standard came from is Denarius, which is the Roman currency of use, and the Persian currency was Drachma, which is the silver dirham. So, Rasulullah obviously he brought in all these reforms, but at the same time, you know, he kept the gold and silver standard, which was actually borrowed from the Romans and the Persians uh, at that point in time. So, probably the complex, the complexity of implementing or reviving the Islamic way of life, uh, you know, it's obviously a little bit more involved, a little bit more complex and, you know, a lot of intricacies involved uh, versus uh, how it was done 1400 years ago. Would you, would you agree with that or? Well, I think, I think it's a, I mean, there's obviously more to it today because the mm. way, 
like the way how I would say like to your point is that the way the Arabian Peninsula at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was not integrated into the Roman or the Persian mm-hmm. empires respectively, right? Whereas our countries today are deeply integrated into mm-hmm. the capitalist economic system because just the way how capitalist imperialism works, right? And so the question is, is how do we untangle ourselves? Is a much mm-hmm. more complex kind of process because it's a, it would say it's a much more, uh, you know, tricky process, right? Yeah. Because yeah. all eyes are on us, right? Exactly. You know what I mean? When you have reports like being put out by Ren, you know, civil democratic Islam, which talk mm-hmm. to how they're going to divide and conquer us, right? Or call, you know, you know, label it, uh, our love for one other, a disease, mm-hmm. called, you know, Omidas. It's like the, the, mm-hmm. their planners in Washington, D.C., London and France and other mm-hmm. places on how to keep us down, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas the, the Persian and the Romans didn't care so much for the Arabs, yeah. right? Because yeah. they, they, they were, they saw them as they left back, alone, yeah. Yeah, backward people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Allah gave them cover. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's how the, the first Islamic state yeah. came to be. Yeah, and I just want to mention, like, but the, the questions that Brother Quorum has posed, these are very important questions because all this needs to be laid out. Like, if we are, we, if we are, uh, if we're advocating that Islam offers, like, in terms of the best system for both Muslims and non-Muslims on this planet, and in terms of, uh, and also in this case, uh, in this context, we're talking about the economic system, right? All these intricacies need to be laid out in, in kind of, like, um, implementing all this, right? So, it's, it's a very important question because as, as you said, and as you, everyone here is alluding to, is that uh, the world has been cantonized, right, with this nation-state system, the secular, capitalistic nation-state system, right, and um, and we're and uh, and this has affected the Muslims in the world as well. Like our minds have been colonized, <laughs> hence. Uh, decolonizing. decolonizing minds that's our attempt right, yeah, that's right. so <laughs> so I, yeah <laughs> so this is an attempt to kind of decolonize all our minds are and, and kind of look get outside this framework that we're subject to and see you know what what, what is is there a better alternative is islam is just not all rituals but it actually offers actually the best system for humanity right mm-hmm.